Do you know how the cell phone, computer, laptop, and probably every other machine today began? It began with a little device that can fit inside your pocket. This is the transistor. And this is how it all began. Originally, vacuum tubes were used to control the electric currents in electric devices, such as radios, TVs, telephone networks, and early computers. Because of the tube size, the electric devices had to be fairly large. A turning point was reached with the development of the transistor, which began a new era. The year, 1947. In 1947, life was good. The war was over, soldiers were coming home, all was well, but more was to come. Until 1948, vacuum tubes were used in almost all of the electrical devices. For example, radios, TVs, and many other devices. The problem was that vacuum tubes were very large in size they were also unreliable and they became too hot. The way that vacuum tubes worked was that there was a glass tube that surrounds a vacuum with contacts on both ends and all the gases inside the tube were removed and you can get a current which in order to make the vacuum tube work the current needs to go in one direction. That's how a vacuum tube works. That was life in 1947. The discovery of the transistor is the result of scientific research. Research by men of insight who sought to understand the atomic structure and electrical behavior of semiconductors which had intrigued them for years. Where it all truly began was in 1907 when Theodore Vail, who was the former president of AT&T, was taken out of retirement and was brought back to AT&T to help fight off competition that was booming from the expiration of the telephone patents of Alexander Graham Bell. The way Theodore solved it was by transcontinental service. Now that couldn't be done because a vacuum tube that was invented by Lee DeForest in 1906 used too much power, was unreliable, and generated too much heat. It wasn't until the 1930s that Mervyn Kelly, Bell Labs' director of research, realized that a better mechanism was needed. Finally, in 1945, Mervyn put together a team of scientists to develop a solid-state semiconductor switch. This team was a team of many people. Bill Shockley, Walter Bratton, John Bardeen, the most important, and some others. In the spring of 1945, Shockley created what he believed to be a semiconductor amplifier that was dependent on his field effect theory. We are honored now to have with us William Shockley, the inventor of the junction transistor. He was head of the team at Bell Laboratories, which developed the first transistor. And for this, the three men were awarded the Nobel Prize in 1956. Electrical conductivity of semiconductors like germanium lies somewhere between that of good conductors like copper and good insulators like rubber. Time went by. Shockley mostly worked at home. Bardeen, who was a theoretician, would think of experiments. Bratton built and did the experiments. Finally, in the fall of 1947, Bratton tried to dunk the whole mechanism into a tub full of water. Astonishingly, it worked a little. Bratton now commenced to experiment with gold on geranium, which eliminated the liquid layer, which in the theory said that it was a liquid that was slowing down the device. Then, suddenly, Bardeen had discovered an astonishing new discovery. 
that led to the creation of the point contact transistor. Bardeen immediately told Bratton of the discovery, and together, without telling Shockley, they both went on and invented the point contact transistor. Well, it could have been an accidental discovery, I believe. It didn't come that way. As a matter of fact, all of the theory that we needed to, uh, to do transistors had been well developed before we really got one to work, and, it, uh, and even after the point contact first worked, it was still some time before we saw the uh, really simpler um, matter of the junction transistor. But it, it could have been an accident. Shockley went on and on his own invented the junction transistor, which is more rugged and practical and much easier to manufacture than the other one. And finally, on June 30th, 1948, Bell Labs settled on the name Transistor. Sadly, the Transistor got very little fame at the time, but Shockley went to Palo Alto, California, and there he founded Shockley Semiconductor. But his personality made eight of his best workers leave. Six went on to found a company called Fairchild Semiconductor, and the other two of the eight went on to form Intel Corporation. Still, Bardeen, Bratton, and Shockley each got little money for their research, but there is no doubt that they started Silicon Valley. After that, the group broke up. Bardeen left to go to the University of Illinois. Bratton remained at Bell Labs for many years, then left to go teach. Shockley lost his company and went to teach at Stanford. Later, in 1952, the first transistor radio was produced, and in 1973, the first cell phone was produced, by Martin Cooper in New York. There is no doubt that the transistor has revolutionized the whole world, and the only way we would have ever gone to the moon was with the transistor. That is how a little, tiny device changes the big world. Intel Corporation announced today a major breakthrough in the evolution of the transistor. For the first time since the invention of silicon transistors over 50 years ago, transistors using a three-dimensional structure will be put into high volume production. After the invention of the transistor, everything changed. Modern life, science, families, everything. Today, more and more advanced transistors are being developed allowing there to be better technology throughout the world. Now, we have hundreds of satellites orbiting the Earth, Moon, Mars, and beyond. Now, radios are able to be heard from while in your car. Now, you can play games on your phones, and if you miss someone, you can always call them, or even see them in video chat. And if you need to know something quick, you can search it up on the internet on a search engine. And to think that it all began with a little device, with a few men trying to solve a puzzle that would change the course of man forever from hereafter. The following is a transcript of an interview with Mr. John Eldridge, Senior Engineer and CEO at Technical Services in Dallas. Hello, John. Hello, Lucas. What were electronics like before the transistor? Well, equipment was heavier, bigger, and demanded much more power to operate. What were they made up of? The first transistors were made from germanium, which was okay, but silicon was found to be much better. How did the transistor revolutionize the world? Well, due to the great reduction in size, heat, and power demand, more complex systems could be made. And what became possible because of the transistor? The transistor technology led to the integrated circuit that allowed the Apollo moon landing, personal computers, and the digital revolution. Thank you, John. You're welcome, Lucas. I hope it turns out to be a great project for you.